Well, welcome to another episode of See Here Love, and I'm really looking forward to hearing my guest's story what it means to be audaciously alive. Who doesn't love that word, audaciously? We need to use that more, I think, in our everyday conversation. My guest today, Roxanne Harris. Okay, listeners, okay, this is the first time I've introduced someone like this because it's amazing, is a board-certified bioregulatory medicine practitioner, a holistic nutritionist, a blood microscopist, and homeopath, and glutenologist. Yes, it's amazing. Was that good, Roxanne? I actually practiced that before I got on with you because I'm like, I got to nail these and this is fantastic. Roxanne is also a keynote speaker speaking on health, wellness, and faith, and she's also the author of Audaciously Alive, Choosing to Live Well on Purpose. Roxanne Harris, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Linda. It's awesome to be here. Great. Now, I did that well, right? Just named off all those things. I was like practicing, said it incorrectly. It's amazing. Okay, some people are probably like, what is, I mean, you've got blood microscopist, holistic nutritionist, homeopath, and glutenologist. Quickly, just in like 30 seconds, what does each one mean? Because that's fascinating to me. Sure. Well, holistic nutrition means that we are looking at nutrition from um, an actual food-based, real food diet, looking at how um, food is not just like medicine, it is. So how can we incorporate healthy foods into your diet to give your body what it needs to be healed and whole and functioning well? In blood microscopy, um, we look at the blood under a microscope. It's quite cool because the client gets to watch at the same time. So it's like the most fascinating um, (laughs) science experiment they've probably ever had. But what's really neat about it is they watch the blood and the cells interact. And when you go to the doctor and have your blood work done, they're just looking at whatever boxes they ticked. Whereas when we look at under the microscope, we get to see it all at the same time how the body is functioning, interacting, deficiencies, excesses, uh, where the systems are being challenged. So it gives us, again, that root cause, what's really happening that's causing the complaints of the client. Wow. Um, And when we look at a homeopath, a homeopath has been around for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. They look at uh, medicine as minuscule doses, so teeny tiny doses of medicine just to support your body and help your body recharge, re-energize and enter into healing. And a glutenologist is someone who specifically studied the effects of gluten on the body, on the cells, on the tissue. And we know that it's not just wheat, everyone. Uh, Every grain, including rice or corn or oats, they all have gluten and simply eating a gluten-free diet is Man. not enough to launch your body into wholeness and healing and and change. And bioregulatory medicine is an international degree, um, basically in functional medicine. So looking at the entire package, uh, the body, the soul, the spirit, how do we bring healing on every level and everything that we can incorporate to help the client uh, live their best life, fully alive, thriving, being audacious, making great choices, <laughs> living well. That's amazing. Well done. You know, I look at that, I'm like, well done for you in just all of those areas. And I know that this will come in as we kind of discuss your story, but I love, you know, you're the author of this book, Audaciously Alive, Choosing to Live Well on Purpose. But You know, as I said in my intro, Roxanne, like, we don't usually say audacious. Like, live audaciously. That's audacious. Now, I want to say that more. I think I'm going to bring that into a couple meetings after this at my work and see what they do. But talk to me about what that means, audaciously alive or living audaciously. I know it connects with your story, but maybe talk about that. And I really want to get into your story because it's an incredible journey that you've been on. Yeah, and so audacious is kind of interesting because when I first started toying with, uh, well, who am I really? Like, what has made me able to show up to the degree that I did to actually reverse autoimmune disease? And, you know, all of the words that people were using, it didn't seem right. 
it was like, well, you have grit, you have determination, you don't stop, right? And I'm like, yeah, those are all true. Um, audacious sometimes is seen actually in a negative light. And so people are like, you shouldn't use that word. Yet it was the only word for my very close circle of friends and colleagues that it really fit. And so audacious is really, it's that that grit, that tenacity. I actually wrote something in my book about that. It was pretty direct. And I think I actually, I'm going to read it because um, I think that it works really well with what we're talking about. Okay. And I, I just launch off and it says, my body is healing itself because I believe it will. It doesn't matter what the report of the doctors are. It doesn't matter what the x-ray says, the blood work says, the scan says. I believe that God made my body to heal, repair, recover, restore, regenerate over and over and over again. I believe I that Jesus paid the price that my body would be made whole. And so audacious is going above and beyond that grit or determination. It's deciding. It, you know, the scriptures say, let your yes be your yes and no your no. When you decide and nothing's going to shake you, you can wave all the birthday cake and ice cream and pizza and all the stuff in my face. I will never do it because let your yes be your yes. What I say about being audacious is I choose to see the possibilities and speak a better prognosis over my life, mm -hmm. the prognosis of God. A diagnosis doesn't have to be the end of living. It can be the starting point to being audaciously alive. Audacious living is taking bold risks, even if it goes against standard practice. It's the courage to stand up for yourself, your beliefs, and your dreams. It's the gu guts to believe in yourself, to make it happen, to create your own future, and to walk boldly in faith where no woman may have gone before. It's wow. having the moxie to say no and never look back and doubt your decision. Audacity is the stance of a warrior knowing what she wants, going after it until she gets it no matter what. And so oh. for me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. It's so empowering. It it gives you where you are not, you know, kind of a victim of what people say or or. You know what I'm saying? And when I say that, it's like I, what I'm what I'm hearing is we can make choices, healthy choices for ourselves, and decide to do that and make those steps. Right? Like that's really empowering for those who are just really struggling with their health and going. I don't know what to do. And that's what I'm I'm really grateful for this conversation, Roxanne, because I think there's a lot of our listeners see your love who are in that same place, like struggling with their health, um, have a diagnosis or or a loved one. And it's like we need to encourage, empower, and infuse them with sort of this audacious living. So I, I love that in your book. Uh, obviously, we need to hear about for you because you only write something <laughs> like this because you have been through something. Uh, so let's start with that. Let's let's sort of go back, maybe share a little bit about your background uh, and then to the prognosis and then what has happened from then to now. I've had a life as most people have, right? You've got... You do the high school, you go to university, you know, I studied nursing. I thought that's what, you know, I wanted to do. You know, then I had some very unfortunate situations with, you know, um, very challenging uh, outcomes for clients. And I thought, you know, is this really, you know, is this really what I want to do? Like killing people here, like not supporting them, not even being able to use what I learned about helping them with their food, their diet you know, helping them with relaxation techniques. It was just so, you know, working in the box. And, you know, we got married. My husband, you know, took us, you know, to all these places with his job, you know, and became, you know, um, just a mom, right? Living my best life for what I thought it was. Uh, you know, I had a massive garden, grew our own food. 
We didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't, you know, uh, mm-hmm. do any drugs of any sort. You know, we were basically living life. But I had, you know, a lot of, I'll say, emotional stress, a lot of trauma in my past that I couldn't just, you know, let it roll off my back. I was holding on to all of these really unfortunate things, some of which I write about in my book. And we had three children. We moved to um, basically the Ottawa, uh, Canada area. And, you know, at that point, found out that my daughters had been sexually abused by a family member while my husband and I were here on a house hunting trip. And it devastated me. I, I can't, you know, even describe. I spent my whole mama life right? Trying to protect my daughters because I had a number of incidences growing up where, you know, people tried to take me in their cars and just things that I saw. And so I was ultra vigilant, right? I was like, wow, you know, like I'm like the worst mom in the whole world. Like how could I let this happen? Like I was just so diligent with everyone and everything. And it created a real chasm between me and most of my family members. We had moved across the country. We had no friends, no support. I was terrified uh, that people would find out that this had happened and treat my daughters differently. My, you know, daughters would go up for story time at the front of the church every Sunday and I'd be praying, oh God, please don't let them tell, you know, what happened or hey, I had to go to the police this week and I'm like oh Lord Jesus like mm-hmm. and it was this weird you know life that I was living trying to portray that everything was perfect but inside so much grief and anger and just frustration and what ended up happening was we got pregnant again our little miracle baby and you know two weeks after he was born I got up one morning me he was crying to be fed And I couldn't move. I couldn't move anything. Every joint of my entire body was the worst possible. I mean, I would go through a million childbirths before I ever want to experience that pain again. And here I have a two-week-old baby crying. My daughters are under the age of five. They're not going to be able to help me with him. I'm too little to get him even out of the crib. And, you know, he was literally right across the hall for Le Rue. And it was more than half an hour of me, like, just gripping on to anything. The bed, the wall, the door, my body just screaming in pain. Money's coming, money's coming, and I'm bawling. And I'm like, you are just the whole time the record. You are the worst parent. I can't believe you're letting your baby cry. You know, what's wrong with you? And... To this day, I actually, you know, have no idea how I actually scooped him up and got him back to the bed where I could nurse him, except for the grace of God. Because once I actually got to his crib, I couldn't even pick him up. I was like, just screaming in pain. That episode launched me into this investigation about what was really going on in my body. And, you know, I I remember it was the days where we didn't even have call display on the phone. Be when the phone rings and you just kind of know what you know. It's like, you know, who's on it. You know, it's going to be A, B, or C. And it was like 10 after 7 in the morning, getting my kids ready for school. The phone rings. I was like, it's my doctor. And, you know, I, I said I knew it was you. And she's like, Roxanne, we need, like, major help. The inflammation is so bad in your body. You're you're like you're 84 years old. That's how severe it was, the markers. You know, and I went through um, a diagnosis. um, On Boxing Day, they diagnosed me with uh, ankylosing spondylitis, which is an autoimmune where your body literally sticks itself together. It fuses the spine, other joints, your hips together to immobilize you. And When I think back at that, I'm like, well, of course, because I was in such guilt, fear, shame, shock, torment. I was literally immobilized, right? And 
we went through the gamut as many people do. First people, you know, that have this experience, they can spend up to 10, 15, 20 years even trying to get a diagnosis. But then once you have the diagnosis, what do you do? Because none of the medicine okay. was working, right? They were worried that I, I would go to the pharmacist. The pharmacist would say, you can't take these together. It could kill you. And I'm like, well, talk to my doctor. And my wow. doctor was like, there's nothing else we can do, right? And it came to an amazing crux where four years after my diagnosis, uh, a really neat a medication came on the market. And it was quickly removed because it was killing people. Tens of thousands of people were having heart attacks and strokes on this medication. And I had a couple little mini strokes, but I was like, I can function. I can pick up my kids. You know, they can bump my leg and it doesn't send searing electrical sparks up and down my spine. You know, like, this is amazing. Until my specialist was like, Roxanne, I can't give this to you anymore. It's killing people. You can't have it. I'm so sorry. It's the only thing that, that's worked for you. And I was begging with her. I'm like, you can't do that to me. Like, I have four kids, like, under mm. the age of, like, nine years old. Like, wow. what have I been talking about? Like, I need to be a mom. Like, I have to show up. And my, my son was there. He was four years old. And she... He said, Roxanne, you are going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life by the time you're 35 years old. I can't even imagine hearing that. Like, if I heard that, I'd be like, like, I'm actually getting chills as you said that. Right? And I'm, you know, looking wow. at my miracle baby, the baby that should have never been, that I asked God for. Okay. And I'm like, that, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. So in a split second, I just, I looked at her and I said, hell no, there is yes. no way in hell I will ever get in that wheelchair. That's it. And she looked at me, grabbed my arm and said, okay, Roxanne, we'll have a nice life. Oh, that was it. And... I'm sitting there and I said, you know, God, there has to be something that you've created here on this earth that's going to mm -hmm. help me. I believe in the blood of Jesus. I know that Jesus is going to heal me, but Lord, what can I do? There has to be something, you know, because God says in his word that we are to take care of the temple, right? And so, Lord, what am I missing and that's what launched me into all of those natural, you know, degrees and certificates and diplomas and whatever, because I was looking to help myself. Yeah. And, and through helping myself, right, I learned a lot of stuff because I didn't understand the word no. No is not mm. a part of my vocabulary when it comes to my life. God promises okay. 120 years that I'm going to take every one of them, right? God promises in John 10.10 10, that we would have life and life more abundantly. Melinda, every day for years, I woke up in the most excruciating pain. And every day, as soon as I realized I was alive and breathing, I said, thank you, Jesus, and I'm alive. Eh. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for making my body whole. Thank you for letting my body move and function. Thank you for life every day. And every day was worse. But every day I praised him and I thanked him because this is what healing is. Healing is calling that which is not yet visible or felt into reality. We're taking the word of God. He sent forth his word and healed them. And so I'm taking his word and I'm applying it to my life. God is a healing amen. God. God is not a liar. God's promises are yes and amen, and they are true. And so if he did it once, he would always do it. Ezekiel, the valley of dry bones, was like my scripture. As a daddy, you did it once. He said, let there be life in these dry bones. The bones rattled. Amen. The bones got skin and membranes, and the bones became real functional people again. Daddy, let these dry bones be infused with life. Daddy, you did it once. 
So yeah. this was this was my lot and my process. I didn't know the word no. When the doctor said no, my husband used to laugh and say, Roxanne, <laughs> when someone says no to you, it's like you take it as a challenge. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm going to show you. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, I had my, my hips replaced because for years I threw my body forward to walk. Like I literally couldn't move my hip. And the wow. doctors just kept saying, yeah, yeah, it's the AS, it's the AS. This is part of the problem when you get a diagnosis. They don't listen to anything else that's wrong with you. It's always, you're just the disease. Well, I reject that. So by the time I had an emergency, when they finally went in and took x-rays of my hip, they were like, this is a medical emergency. Like your hip is fused into the socket. That's why you can't walk. And, you know, the surgeon said to me, he said, Roxanne, like, I don't know if you'll ever be able to walk again. He said, in fact, I don't even know how you walked in my office, if that's what you want to <laughs> call what you're doing. He said, I'm looking at your x-rays and it is physically impossible for you to be walking. And they said, well, here's the reality. Nobody told me that. I don't believe that. And God says that I can, and I am going to live and live well. Yes. And so, you know, he wow. said, I, I can replace your hips. Uh, he said, but I don't know if you'll walk again. And he is delighted, right? Delighted at my mobility and the things that I'm doing. And if he could see me now, you know, I'm working out three times a day or a week with a professional uh, trainer. I, you know, I swim. I'm dancing again, things that I didn't do for like 18 years because wow. of the pain, but I never gave up the hope. It's that audaciousness, choosing to mm -hmm. live audaciously alive. I dream the impossible because the word of God says that all things are possible for those who believe. I can't wait Sound good. for impossible to stare at me in my face. I want to see it in the mirror, in my movements, in my dancing. doesn't matter the challenge because I decided, I said to her, hell no, I'm never getting in that wheelchair, whatever it takes. And I pressed in for that. So this is so encouraging because I'm thinking of a few friends and other people I know that are in the place of, I got the diagnosis or I'm in a very tough situation that I can't seem to get out physically and with my health. So I know that you've said, like, as far as you like, I guess the encouragement, Roxanne, is what is the first step? Like, do we proclaim, like, hell no, we're not going to do that? And then what, again, everybody has a different journey, but food, activity, exercise, like, what would you say are things? I think, I think the proclamation of saying today is the day to decide and then making steps toward the change what would you maybe like some top things as people are taking notes because I'm, I'm sure people are going to be taking notes right now to say okay i want and again it's not formulated because it's made different for everyone but i think there's some key things that we can do to start this journey toward health and healing so what are, what are some of your thoughts there are key things so i think first of all you do have to decide i love what you said you know today is the day like it's got to start now one yeah. of the things that people um, are not good at is, you know, it, we might fall down. We might eat the whole chocolate cake or, you know, go on a weekend binge. But every moment of every day has the potential to be awesome and amazing if we allow it to be. So what? Mm -hmm. Recognize that you, you know, fell off your, your plan and get right back to it. Don't wallow in it and then keep doing those things. So mm -hmm. that choice, today is the yep. day that I will live, right? Today, right now. No one else lives your life, walks in your shoes, lives in your body. No one can make those decisions for you. You decide. It's not up to your husband. It's not up to your kids. Don't stop making excuses. Well, I can't do it, you know, because my kids don't like that food. And we're not talking about your kids. We're talking mm -hmm. about you and being able to show up. And so, 
you know, number one, if everyone could just drink water. Mm -hmm. So many of my clients, they don't even know what water is. Okay. We are, should drink half of your body weight in pounds, in ounces of water every day. So if you weigh 128 pounds, because the math is easy, half of that is 64. 64 ounces is two liters of water every day to do basic daily body function, maintenance, upkeep, and detoxification. If you weigh more, that's more water. Coffee's not water. Tea's not water. Juice, milk, pop. Those things are not water. They're not hydrating. Your body can't function without it. In fact, research shows that like 78% of arthritic pain decreases or diminishes entirely by proper hydration. Wow. So it's important, right? The next thing I would say, you know, You don't need to choose or do everything. Do one thing really good, right? So if you decide that you need to drink water, then that's what you're doing every day for a month, creating new healthy habits. And I'd like to um, stack habit. Make sure that you're doing things that already link to other habits, right? So Mm. for example, maybe you have uh, three triggers. Maybe you want to, uh, let's say, do some jumping jacks because your lymphatic system is slow and sluggish and you've got lots of cellulite and you're puffy. Well, guess what? You're going to do 25 or 50 jumping jacks before you get in the shower every morning. That's your trigger. Before the shower, I need to do my jumping jacks. And it's really cool because Clients will say to me, oh, Roxanne, I'll be in the shower. And I'm like, oh, no, I forgot my jumping jacks. And they jump out of the shower and they do them. Hannah, that's become their habit. That's right? good. Mm-hmm. Like how many times do you drive somewhere? You don't even know how you got there. It's because it's a habit now. Mm-hmm. Women that need to strengthen their pelvic floor, right? When you're out driving, Every time the light is red, you do Kegels. It's your trigger. Red light, Kegels. Red light, Kegels. Every single time. And so those things are really good. One of the other things across the board that will help every single woman is, ladies, we got to get after the salads. And we're not talking about a little tiny side salad with two pieces of lettuce and a slice of tomato and cucumber. When Mm -hmm. you go to the grocery store and they've got those prepared salads and they've got the individual size and then the family size, the Mm -hmm. family size is your size. (laughs) It's it's an actual, you know, personal size because 10 cups of romaine lettuce is actually one serving of lettuce. You know, we can't have two pieces of cucumber and three stalks of broccoli. We're like, wow, we had like two servings of vegetables today. Well, two cups of cucumber is one serving of cucumber, right? So Mm. to do the greens, and here's why greens are really important for everyone, but especially for women. Greens are very high in alkaline minerals. There's lots of vitamins and things as well, but we tend to eat an over acidic diet. Lots of sugar, caffeine, grains, so your cereals, your breads, your muffins, crackers, Dairy and meat, all of those foods are really acidic and they create pain and inflammation, also a rotting and rusting of the inside, the cells of our body. And then we see Mm. that come out on the aging of the skin. But salads, greens, romaine, spinach, bok choy, collard, it doesn't matter, dandelion, full of magnesium and calcium, Right. These two um, minerals were going to help you with your PMS (laughs) and your hormones because most women, and especially if you have a chronic degenerative condition or a painful condition, you are very low in magnesium. Magnesium and calcium stop cramping in the body. That's why many women will crave chocolate because chocolate is also very high in magnesium and calcium. Except for that most chocolate ladies that we're eating, there's no chocolate in it, right? Mm -hmm. You have to buy 75% or more 
to be able to get the benefits of chocolate. It's why if you just go and buy that, you know, Mars bar or coffee crisp or whatever, you're like pretty soon four or five, six chocolate bars and your brain's still like, give me chocolate. Mm-hmm. In those cases, you're not addicted to chocolate. You're addicted to sugar because there's no chocolate in there. Right. Right. So if we eat more alkaline foods, the salads, the vegetables, fruits, berries, you're going to notice a decrease in inflammation, a decrease in cramping, just a more uh, relaxation throughout the whole body. Right. Another that is thing good. that I'm... go ahead. No, I'm just saying I'm writing these notes down because these are things that for me, which I know, but here's the thing, I know and some of it I didn't know, but as I'm getting older, Roxanne, I'm realizing that these are so important. Like I think, you know, before we we started recording, I was talking about, you know, my challenge with going through like perimenopause. And a lot of my girlfriends now are kind of going through perimenopause and menopause and how it's sort of like overnight the change happened. Like our weight was fine and the elasticity in our face seemed fine and our hair was like fine. And then all of a sudden it was like whoosh. And all of a sudden, what's happening with my skin? Why am I getting gut weight? Why do I have more fatigue? Why am I getting migraines? Why do I feel more sluggish? And some things, you know, I've kind of gone lax on and other things I'm still continuing. But, you know, as a woman, as our body changes and all these things, these are so helpful because I eat salad, but not enough. I drink water, but not enough. Like what I'm hearing you say is, and for me, I, it's just like adding that extra will definitely help me. The jumping jacks are really good. You know, my my chiropractor has always said, because I, I get overwhelmed at like the gym and I've had gym memberships and then never use them because I go and I'm like, he said, just start walking like 30 minutes a day. That's it. Just Just walk, Melinda. Just walk. And I'm like, well, that sounds so simple. He's like, I want you to get in the habit of just walking your 30 minutes. Like, don't do like a 10 minute come back and go, I walk to like, because you're busy because work is so busy. And so I started, you know, integrating that. And and it took a bit because I'm like, okay, I have to get up and go out and do 30 minutes and come back. But once you're like, get in the habit, it just starts becoming part of your rhythm of the day. And I did notice, and I have noticed the change in just doing that simple thing, which isn't like huge. And I can actually do that. Like, For me to think about going, for me personally to go to a gym, I start getting anxious. I get all worked up. And then it's so easy for me to say no because I'm like, ah, there's so much prep. So I really like this because I think sometimes we get overwhelmed with our health. Like how do we start? What do we do? Are are these gadgets and things I have to buy and get and, you know, but these are things we can all do. Can we drink more water? Yes. Can we eat more salads? You know? Yes. Can we start these sort of stacked habits, Roxanne? Yes. But I think the key is like, you decide, I love this, you decide, today is the day that I will live. It's the choice. Now do it. And I think that's it. You know, throughout this sh- my show too, when we talk about, we talk a lot about hard topics and themes and over and over for the past eight seasons, it's always been, you have to decide. You know, you you have to make the choice for change, to untangle from your family of origin trauma, to untangle from you have to decide. So God has given you his spirit of power and love and self-discipline and sound mind. And he's given you tools and people and community, but you have to make those decisions. And I just love what you're saying. It's very empowering. It's doable. I'm not overwhelmed by the list. (laughs) Well, and you know, like sometimes simple, we we look at things and say, well, that's too simple. It couldn't possibly do anything, right? Which is what I said for walking. I go, no. He goes, just trust me. Start the habit. Do a 30-minute walk. I'm like, okay. And what a change. Like, What a change for me as far as my energy and, you know? Well, I mean, the other thing that you that you mentioned, and it's kind of interesting, is that you know, as we age in that menopause, perimenopause, postmenopause, we've already lived a life and there's a lot of stress. And you said there's there's stress and there's things going on. Yeah. And women's hormones start to fall apart because of the stress. When we are stressed, we are actually in sympathetic nervous system mode, which means fight or flight. It actually means you are being chased by a lion. 
That's what the the equivalent is. Well, nobody mm. is chased by a lion 24 hours a day, seven days a week, month after month, year after year. So what happens is your body, it's called the cortisol steal. Your body's trying to decrease stress because in nature, in two minutes, you've outrun the lion or you're dead. There is no continuation of freak out mode, right? Right. So your body is making massive levels of cortisol to try and calm you down at the expense of every other hormone. So the more stressed we get, we start to see shifts in our hormones for some earlier than others, depending on how they're managing that stress, the body starts to use exorbitant amounts of B vitamins to try and also manage your stress. Salads, FYI, are very high in B vitamins, right? <laughs> but we start to experience other things like abdominal weight gain. Why? Because when there's the cortisol is not working properly, it's going to stress out the adrenals. When y'all are burning the candle at both ends because you're stressed and you've got this and this and 300 million things to do, you're not sleeping. It puts a stress on the adrenals. Then you lie to yourself and say, hey, I'm a night person. I'm a night owl. I work better at night. I'm more creative. I get stuff done. Yeah, because you're on full on adrenaline, right? Because Ned. that's when your adrenals actually wake up instead of in the morning when you're, when you're trying to get out of bed. And then we start to have weird, right? We're having hot flashes. We're having extreme periods. We're having clotting. We're having cramping. <clears throat> and it's because there's an, a disbalance, an imbalance of the hormones in the body that create um, a challenge for your body to function appropriately. When your body is in a full state of health or balance, menopause, that change of life, just happens without notice. The more wow. severe the symptoms are, the more depleted the body is. So yes, the water, yes, the salad, yes, the movement. But we would all do ourselves a huge favor by getting eight to nine hours of sleep every, every night. Every hour that you sleep before midnight is like sleeping two after midnight. This is why when you go to bed at two or three or four, it doesn't matter if you sleep until two or three or four the next day, you're exhausted. The restorative sleep, the regenerative sleep happens before midnight. So if your body needs to heal, the sleep is important. It is way better for you to go to bed at nine o'clock and wake up at four or five in the morning than it is to go to bed at one or two or three and wake up at nine or 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. It's crucial for women. We have to understand this. And we all know that when we have had good sleep, we are more calm. We are more patient. We are more rational. We feel better. We react. We respond better to situations. And generally, we allow our inner radiance, our joy, our peace, our hope to shine through. We become mm -hmm. the woman that God uh, wants us to be and how we should show up in this world. Amazing. Amazing. Honestly, Honestly, as, as you're, you're talking, talking, I was, I was absolutely, absolutely listening, listening but I'm literally, literally thinking, thinking about, about the text I'm writing, writing after this conversation to my girlfriend and to my husband, husband on, on these things. things. Because, because again, again, you know, you like, like I was, I was saying, saying earlier, like, like, like I had, I had a girls weekend, weekend and, and we've been, been meeting, meeting for like 20 years and, and, and it was, you know, you know it's, it's funny, funny to kind of think about, about the conversations 20, 20 years ago to now and all of the conversations now are all about health and our bodies yes, and the changing of our bodies. And and, and, and so, so this, this is really, really practical, practical things, things I want to send out to them to say, hey, these are things we need to do. Let's together commit to doing this. Incredible. So as we finish up here, Roxanne, well, I Let's just, oh, go ahead. I'm to ahead. add that. I think the community is very important, Melinda, right? Mm -hmm. Having other people support you and not let you cheat on yourself so that when you go out oh, to no, the restaurant, right, and you want the milkshake and they're like, hey, girl, you made a decision. You committed to living well. Let's have some sparkling water and throw a lime in it for pizzazz, right? Yeah. But, you, you know, ladies, we're, you're not the status quo. If you are the status quo, you're going to get the same illnesses, conditions, and symptoms as everyone else. Want more for your life. Show up for your life. Choose mm -hmm. more for your life. Good. Right? Yeah. And then find the people around you that 
either want to do the same, right, or at least encourage you to do the same. It's really yeah. important. That's amazing. The community want more for your life. And, you know, I think that's the thing for me. It's like why I'm also saying this. I'm texting because I'm actually saying to them, I'm committing to it. So as soon as you, and that's always scary. As soon as you put it out there, they can easily text back and go, how's it going? What are you doing? And you're like, ah, oh, I texted you, didn't I? So I really, really like that. This has been such a pleasure, Roxanne. Let's just, you know, your encouragement to women who are struggling, who can't, don't live audaciously, who need strength and resilience today. What is your encouragement from your own experience of where you were to now to that woman who's just like, I need help. I I don't know if I can live any longer in this way. What would you say to her? I just say decide. Decide that your life is worth living. You know, we can live life barely breathing or we can actually take a deep breath of life and we can live it fully, right? Decide today to awaken the love, the passion, the joy, the peace, right, in your life. Decide that you're not taking no for an answer because, right, he sent forth his word and healed them. Because by his stripes we were healed. We're not discluding what's going on in the body, but we know as Christians that there's more. He, Jesus said, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I, I have come that they would have life and life more abundantly. So if you find yourself, you know, just laying in bed because you can't cope, the pain, the emotional trauma, whatever is going on, decide to get up. It doesn't matter if you just sit on the edge of your bed. That's better than laying down. Maybe you move to an armchair. Maybe sure, you decide that up. every day I'm getting up, I'm having a shower, I'm doing my hair, I'm doing my makeup, even if I'm not leaving my house because I want to feel good. We all know how good it feels to have a shower after we've been, you know, unwell for a few days. I can't. But ladies, you know, don't let, um, don't let society decide to live your life. Okay. Right? You need to decide and make the choices that serve you, right? And then don't waver. Don't be wishy-washy, some versions of the Bible say. Let your yes be your yes. My life matters. Ladies, you can't show up to your spouse, your children, your friends, your family, your community, if you are not the, the optimal you. And I get it. Many of you are perhaps bedridden or wheelchair bound, or you've got things going on. Find people that support you, that encourage you, that nurture you. Find practitioners that will partner with you, but know what your dream is. What do you want for your life? And show up for that dream and make it happen because you can. Incredible. Ross and Harris, where can we pick up your book? Because I know now after listening to this, people are just like, um, we need to get this book. We want to hear more of the story and her tips. There it is. There it is. So Audaciously Alive. Sorry, it's backwards for y'all. Uh, you can pick it up anywhere books are sold. Amazon. You can go online. Chapters. Indigo. Um, yeah. Look for the shoes. Amazing. They're very I important. know. Actually, that's what attracted me. I'm like, <gasps> she's speaking my language. I love shoes. That's another whole show about my love for shoes and how my husband has built me a wall of shelves for my shoes. But that's another day, Roxanne, and another story. But thank you so much. This thank was you so much. So good. You know what? The timing was perfect. I'm in this space and I'm just like, I can do these things. I'm going to choose today to decide. I actually was thinking too, I'm going to go out and get kind of like a one liter water bottle because I visually I need that. Fill it up and then I can have it for the day because if I was just doing glasses of water, I'd lose count. But I think to have that, I'm very much like, I see it. There's my goal. I'm going to drink it. So those are really like, I'm already thinking of things that I can do. So thank you. This is, maybe this was just for me <laughs> and not all the other people that listen. <laughs> well, Melinda, you can uh, put some elastics around that water bottle. So if you need to drink three liters, put three elastics. Every time you finish, take one off so that you know how many liters you've actually had. That's excellent. I love it. Roxanne Harris, thank you so much for being with us here on See Here Love and to our listeners and viewers. I just want to say this, what Roxanne said, decide, decide, you decide that today's the day that you 
will live. Here we are cheering you on. It's a choice. And we want you to make that choice today to decide to live. And I'm, I'm so encouraged by that. And as you do, dear friend, listener, and viewer, know that in the struggle and in the hope, which again, sorry, I need to say this to Roxanne, that idea of when you're, when you're praying, I, I, I never heard this. I love that, that healing is that which is not a reality yet. And you were praying, God, I, you are good. I am thankful. And like speaking that out, I think that's another thing that we have to remind people to do that even in that place where you're just like, well, I'm not healed and I'm feeling like this, you still proclaim and pray because that is faith and that is hope. And so again, viewer, listener, know that as you do all these things, as you decide, you are seen and you are heard and you are deeply loved by God. Thank you so much for joining us.